Uh, so, uh, topic is uh, search analytics, and um, I think I have 40 minutes, so I'll skip things if I have to. Oh, this thing is not moving. Sorry. Uh, what was the trick? If I could find the mouse. Ah, there it is. What did you say? Sludge? Yeah, I'm trying to see where. Okay. And then what? Mount the display, display one, display two. Sorry. Uh, well, where? <laughs> Hold on. No. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to work. Uh, hold on. Oops. I'm, uh, it's good that it's funny. Yeah, that doesn't seem to have done much. So we're back to this. <laughs> and I'll just try and uh, see if I can page down. No. Maybe I can go like this. All right. Sorry. So um, we'll skip this because that's not important. Semantics not important. Um, this is what we'll do today. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'll just get to the important stuff. So uh, search analytics is something that allows us to uh, keep track, collect data about queries and clicks. So I have to keep looking there because I don't have it here. Uh, uh, about queries and clicks and uh, ideally subsequent actions uh, after, after search, after queries, after clicking, um, and collect the data, analyze it, and uh, as a basic product, uh, come up with reports that are all sort of typically trended over time that show us how uh, people are using search, uh, how they are behaving, what they are looking for, what they are failing to find, and so on. Um, the, the goal of this, uh, so this is not the means, it's, the, uh, it's, um, it's not the goal, it's the means, and the, the, the goal is to improve search results, the, the user experience uh, over time, whether it's through improvement of search results themselves or anything else that has to do with search that um, uh, would yield a better user experience. It's also an ongoing effort, uh, something that you have to keep doing uh, periodically uh, to make sure everything is uh, behaving well, uh, that search is improving, that people are not suddenly uh, shying away from search uh, or, or starting to fa having failures or something like that. Uh, it's not SEO, search analytics is not SEO. Uh, I mention it here because I've seen it mixed up in the past. Uh, SEO is obviously about uh, optimization of pages of the site to make it uh, appear high up on uh, uh, results pages of global web search engines. Uh, whereas search analytics is something that shows you about, tells you about uh, the behavior of users on your site, on your 
with your search. Um, the two are related in a sense that uh, S, the SA search analytics can help you with SEO sometimes. For instance, it can uh, tell you what users on your site are searching for and uh, that can lead you to rare terms that you may use uh, in, um, in, your, in your pages or in th uh, things like AdWords where you can bid for rare terms because um, they're not taken or they're not expensive. But um, you wouldn't know that unless you, have, un unless you analyzed what people on your site are searching for. Um, oops. Um, it's also search analytics is also not web analytics, although the two are related. Uh, search analytics is a little bit more direct uh, because you have information that people are entering uh, when they're searching. Uh, with the web analytics, you only see what they click on, how they click through the site. You don't, they don't actually tell you about their intent, whereas with search analytics, they actually tell you what, what they're looking for, which is um, more powerful. Um, the two go hand in hand and oftentimes, uh, and you'll see it in some of the slides, uh, in some of the screenshots, we have a, we've developed a search analytics solution and it, it's search only, but sometimes it would be nice to correlate both um, web analytics and, uh, and the search part. And I'll point it out later on. Um, the reason we want search analytics, and actually, I, when I, I did this talk once before last week, and I uh, asked people in the audience uh, who has, who's using search analytics, so I'd like to ask here, is anyone here using any sort of search analytics? Oh, more than before. Okay, uh, uh, is anyone here using a, a ready-made solution, or are you uh, analyzing the query logs yourselves? Uh, ready-made solution? So mostly log analysis, I'm guessing. Okay, so uh, the reason we, we want this is because you want to monitor and measure everything in general. Um, if you don't think that's the case, you should start thinking about it. Um, it's, it's kind of like self-introspection. Uh, you have to look in, inside to see what's going on to make an improvement. Ideally, you do it over time um, and uh, you, make, you see where you, what the status is, how you're doing, and, and then move from there. Uh, same with search analytics, you have to keep track of the search and the quality of search over time. And you can do that with search analytics. Otherwise, uh, without having the tools, uh, you have no idea whether any changes you make, whether to the search engine back and to tuning to the data uh, that you uh, re-index differently to the UI, you have no way of knowing what effect that has. Or you have indirect uh, way by looking at, say, traffic search traffic, but that's not very precise. Uh, so with search analytics, you have um, something that tells you whether any changes you made are good or bad, and you can uh, uh, use it as an ongoing, uh, on an ongoing basis to improve the search experience. Um, so it can help you with the, uh, this content acquisition refers to uh, the fact that people are telling you what they're searching for, and when you know that, you know whether you have the adequate content or not. Or enhancement of content means that uh, if people are searching for certain, using certain terminology that you un, your content doesn't have, you can enhance your content uh, to have those um, terms. Uh, and of course, m m it all leads to money in the end, uh, in, in uh, many cases for businesses who rely on search uh, as a way of, say, getting people from visitors to, to buyers. This is super crucial because this is how you get more of them to buy. If you have good search results and they have a good search, uh, search experience. Uh, so we'll move on to specific reports. Not all of them, because there are lots of them, but uh, some. Uh, and I've roughly grouped them into these failures and non-failures uh, reports. And you'll see that some are actionable and some are less actionable. Uh, but nevertheless, they, they are interesting and useful. If nothing, else, uh, if nothing else interesting, yeah. Um, so here are some examples of failures. Uh, the, the very popular one that you'd hear are queries that yield zero hits. So uh, you don't want to have those, uh, typic it, because it means that uh, you're disappointing a, a, a user potential customer who may uh, uh, say, oh, th this thing doesn't have what I need, and turn around and go away and never come back. Um, 
queries with low CTR, low click-through rate, are queries that are, are, are they require examination because low uh, click-through rate may mean that the results are bad and people are saying, no, this is not what I'm looking for. They're retrying the query or, or disappearing again. Uh, similarly, high search exit rate is something that uh, hints that there may be an issue with the quality of search results because people are looking at the results and disappearing without clicking, uh, let alone buying something or clicking through the target. Um, and so it's all about uh, this, about possibly bad results and end refinements is similar uh, in the sense that it's a, it's a signal that people are retrying their, their search in multiple ways uh, because they, they find that the original search didn't, didn't uh, get them what they, what they were after. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, zero hit queries specifically. Uh, there are two ways to think about it, at least that's how I think about it. Uh, one is keeping track uh, over, of zero queries uh, over time. So the percentage of zero queries over time, if you get 100 uh, search requests in a day, how many of those were uh, y resulted in, in results that had zero hits? Um, so no results. Uh, so you want to track that over time, but also you want to focus on queries that are popular on the site, so frequently used queries on the site, and that also happen to have a zero, a zero hits. So those are your sort of valuable queries that, that should be giving good stuff, to, uh, good results to people, but they, uh, they're returning zero hits, that's, that's bad. You want to fix that. Um, if you have a report that shows zero hit queries, you may s realize that it's due to misspellings uh, or that people are using different uh, terminology than, uh, than the one you're using. Uh, in that case, you can do obvious uh, sort of search, search backend things. You can uh, introduce, uh, did you mean spelling, co uh, spelling correction to the site? You could use uh, uh, synonyms. You could expand the synonyms. Seeing this report will give you an idea of what this terminology is. Are people using automobile uh, and not the word car? And you didn't think to, to, to make a, an alias, to make a synonym for that? Well, th this will tell you. Um, similarly, uh, matching content, uh, maybe they're searching for, for automobiles and you do not have anything about that. So you, this is a, a tip that maybe you should uh, get what people are searching for on your site. Um, and there are other, other issues that uh, this, this can reveal, reveal. And here's a screenshot of one such report. Um, I don't know how much you can see. It looks fuzzy from here, but um, basically here on this side are various filters and you can ignore them for the purposes of this talk. This is time and then different, you can select different queries. Uh, and over here, this is a, this is a re report that shows you top end uh, queries. You can see them by count. And this is from searchhadoop.com. Numbers are very small. Um, if this were uh, uh, plugged into a real site with lots of traffic, these numbers will be uh, bigger and probably, uh, and if it, this is a, a site that you can, where you can search everything about Hadoop, mailing lists, uh, Jira, and so on. So the, the search term is a little funky, but if, if, it, if it were a general sort of search engine, then this would be probably some English or German uh, terms on the left. Um, so this is, um, this is telling us, hey, this particular query, uh, is yielding zero uh, to zero hits tw yielded zero hits twice, so which is okay because uh, uh, this is how many times uh, somebody searched for that, and this is how many times for some some reason it returned to uh, it returned zero hits. So this is something that I may want to look in, into. This is a bad example in terms of data because of the site where it was taken from. If it were real site, the, the 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 queries would probably be more meaningful and the numbers would be better. There would be more queries with zero hits. Uh, one reason actually why we don't have zero, lots of zero hits uh, on this site is because we use something called Researcher, and I think I, think I included that um, slide. Uh, it's something that, it's something that, um, sorry. It's something that I'll point out, I think, in, a, in one of the subsequent slides. So. Uh, what you can do when you have zero, uh, when you see that there are uh, queries that have zero hits, um, you could use uh, did you mean functionality, which uh, will help 
people who are simply misspelling, mistyping things. Uh, you can use autocomplete uh, in this. Um, so when the people type something, you can offer suggestions. Where these suggestions come from is a different story. It can come from query logs, if the query logs are good. It can come from a, a database, if you have nice structure, structured data that fits into autocomplete. Um, in a conference that I was at last week, uh, somebody mentioned that they know of a story where a big e-commerce company simply added autocomplete to their site and, and added millions of dollars uh, to their bottom line. Um, so it's, it's, it's a super simple thing to do and more people should use it and it can make a big difference. In our case, we use, um, in, in the case of that site, search Hadoop and search Lucene.com, we use something called Researcher, uh, which um, reissues queries when, when the results look bad and that's why we don't have a lot of zero queries because we rarely run into that situation because we, we fix it. Um, you also want to design a results page uh, in such a way that it's clean, it doesn't confuse people, doesn't distract people, it's cl it clearly shows that there are zero hits if there are zero hits. Um, this is just an example, uh, this shows why we don't have zero hits and basically this is what anyone can do. Um, if you have search and you, and you have high percentage of zero hits. So in our case, we use this component. It's a solar component that uses uh, called the researcher that's based off of a spell checker and that detects the situation where, where it says no results with original query. And it, it offers some alternatives, detect, detects some alternative queries and reissues them immediately without uh, even asking for the per uh, without waiting for the person to click on them, just reruns the search um, and yields results, which is better than having zero queries, typically. Um, so this is, uh, and this shows you actually um, how many of those uh, queries we, we have on a site. This is a, a researcher uh, component selected over there um, on, on the right. And up here it shows you that actually people clicked on, on the results returned by this component, which means if I'm running a business and this clicks count, in this case it's not a business site or anything. It doesn't matter to me if people don't click. But if I, if I were an e-commerce site, then um, this would it, it would matter to me that, uh, that people click on the results and potentially buy something. So this is basically how often this component saved somebody from hitting zero, zero hits. Ah, okay. So this is a query string. This is a count of how many times this query uh, was run, whatever that query was. Uh, this is how many times uh, this query yielded zero hits. In this case, um, that particular query zero times. This is how often the results uh, of the query were clicked. And this is only limited to this. Uh, the queries are limited to the uh, queries ran by this research researcher component. So this me means basically the researcher component's hits uh, were clicked on, I don't know how many times, five here. So that's how many times it saved a user from uh, getting zero hits and not clicking on anything. And this is just a calculation of uh, the, the click-through rate for you know, searches and, and clicks. Um, okay. So the same columns are in, in, were in the previous slides. Sorry, I didn't realize it was that bad. Um, another failure is a situation where people search and, and exit. Again, it's a major, major revenue loss if, if you're base, basing a business on search or, or if search is a, a significant component uh, because it means uh, it's, it's a sign that people are frustrated and, and leaving. Um, and this is where having a, a marrying the search analytics and web analytics is nice uh, because with purely search analytics, you don't keep track of the user when they're elsewhere on the site. You keep, keep track of what they searched for, what they clicked on. But uh, if you have data from elsewhere on the site, uh, whether they've looked at other, other pages, how long they've stayed on the site after the search, how long they were on the site before the search, whether they completed the transaction or not, uh, then it, things become really useful. And again, a high exit rate uh, points to 
potential issues about around the relevance, about around maybe uh, uh, an assumption what default sort order should be. Uh, maybe titles need adjusting. Maybe titles are so bad that when people see them, they're not inclined to, uh, to click on them and they just disappear. Um, and uh, I've seen cases where people have uh, search terms in, in the highlights, in the snippets, and, and for some reason, because of the way content was extracted and saved uh, in the index, uh, this uh, highlights look bad. Um, so there are various things that can uh, that uh, that may be a problem that you can do to fix. Uh, irrelevant queries, uh, uh, irrelevant results. Um, so these are queries that don't yield as good of results as they they could. So what you could do. Uh, as somebody who runs search, is, is look at the top n hits, and you saw, uh, for, ex for instance, a report that will give you top n hits, uh, and look at look at them and judge relevance for each of them. So you would take each of those queries and actually try them, try them out, and see where the good results are, where the bad results are, are assign them some score, and basic and do that for each of the top n queries, depending on how, how, what n is, depends on how many, how much time you've got on your hands, uh, and score each query. Uh, and track these scores over time. Uh, and uh, as you change the search engine backend or UI or whatever, you keep track of these, these changes. Uh, this MRR reference here is something that uh, can be done automatically. Uh, basically, to avoid all the manual work, uh, you could keep track of where people click on. Do they click on the first result, second, fifth, tenth? and assign them a different score depending on where they click. The further from top they click on, the, the lower the score. Um, and you can compute that, obviously, uh, automatically, and again, track over time. Uh, this is sort of a basic report, what your search volume is, uh, especially compared to non-search volume on the site is, for instance, if the uh, traffic is growing, uh, but the search traffic is flat or, or search is going down, then uh, it's something to look into. Maybe you've uh, put the search box somewhere away and people are not finding it, or people are uh, coming back to the site but are learning that the search was bad the first three times, so they, uh, when they come back now, they say, forget search, I'm just going to browse, uh, search doesn't work. Um, from so there are a, a few things here. You, uh, the question is whether you count uh, when people resort things, whether you, re you count uh, as a separate search request when people select facets, when they page, and so on. So those are little details that you, you may want to think about, and they're not so important, potentially, uh, for a site where uh, um, the number of queries is high and this number of activities is, is low. Um, distinct queries. Uh, it's not a, a super actionable type of event, uh, but it's, uh, it's good to know. Uh, for instance, it can uh, affect search performance. Uh, if you're seeing that people are used to use, uh, say, a thousand different queries and suddenly they're using more of them, uh, that could mean that it, this is affecting you know, any kind of a, a query cache, a query results cache in the back end, uh, because now they're using, people are using more search terms and, and there's more churn in the cache. Um, so along actually with uh, search analytics, you also want to have search performance monitoring of some kind in place that would show you this, uh, this information. Um, an extension of this, oh no, no, this is not an extension. Words per query uh, is again not super actionable thing, it's just sort of informative. This number is probably going to stay uh, more or less constant over time or slowly change over time. But it, for instance, if you have a small search box and you find that people are using long query strings, you may want to expand the search box. There have been studies shown that these things, are, uh, the size of the search box matters. Um, also, if you, realize, if you find out that people are using very long uh, queries, you may say, I'm going to use something like autocomplete to make their uh, li lives easier, so they make fewer typos, fewer misspellings, and they get better results consequently. So you, you wouldn't know that you have to do that unless you knew that queries are big. I mean. At least that's one reason to do it. Uh, top queries are the most valuable queries uh, for you, uh, so you want to focus on them. Uh, there'll be typically a, a smaller number of 
very popular queries and a long tail of uh, very rare queries. You want to look at these popular ones and, and you have a limited amount of time, so if you want to optimize something, you're going to optimize the, the, the important things, the important queries. Um, so they tell you about what people are really searching for on the site, um, lots of them. Uh, you want to ensure that the results are good for those. So again, you can, you can manually rerun those queries and make sure the results look good, or you can track things using MRR. MRR. Um, um, Top queries report is also valuable uh, as, a, as a source of information about any new trends, any new um, desires people have, any new demands. Um, it can serve as a source of, for, for best bets. Um, do people use solar here? Anyone uses solar? Some. So solar has this uh, a component called a query elevation component, which allows you to uh, specify specific documents to show up on top for certain uh, queries. So, so for uh, combining that and, and, and the information about uh, which queries are very popular uh, allows you to say, okay, I'm going to take this query and I'm going to map it sort of to this document so that people, when people search, this document shows up on top because I know that this, I, the editorial person or something, uh, know that this is the most relevant document that they should be looking at. <clears throat> and below that, you show the regular results. Um, it also, top queries also may make you think that, hey, maybe there's this search content. There's this content that people are looking for. Why hide them behind the search box? Why don't, just, why don't I just take the content and put it somewhere in very visible places outside of search? Um, and you want to keep track of seasonality when you look at top queries, that these things change uh, over season, you know, during different seasons, different, uh, different queries are popular. Sandals, shorts, towels, uh, coats, and so on. But also, they also change uh, during shorter time spans, like uh, a week. Uh, work days versus, uh, versus a weekend uh, may have, um, people may use different search terms. So if you have a, a way of detecting that, and automatically ideally, and swapping content, changing content depending on the season or time of day or uh, day of the week, then you can uh, you know, make the experience for a person better. And of course, you can anti anticipate things next time uh, for the next cycle, if you have this knowledge. Um, so this is just an example of uh, uh, top queries. So again, these are the top queries, and these are the counts that tell me what the top queries are. So I can focus on those if I want to improve um, the results for those queries. Uh, Besides uh, keeping track of what people uh, search for, uh, it's also very valuable, to, val very valuable to click to keep track of what they click on. That's just a, you know an extension, and of of searching, uh, and also about any sort of subsequent actions that people take. So not only that they clicked uh, on on a hit, but they've actually done something. Um, in an e-commerce site, obviously there will be some sort of a transaction or a subscription or, or whatever. Um, and you want to watch out for cases where there are lots of queries, there are lots of clicks, but transactions are not happening. In that case, it could be something other than search that's a problem, like the page that people get to after they click on, on a search result. But it's, it's valuable to have this data. And this is, again, uh, the sort of thing that search, if, if search analytics is such, if you only, if you only uh, analyze your query logs, you won't really know that. If you analyze search query logs, you'd have to tie searches with some sort of ID, session IDs, query IDs, to, any, so to, to basically the database where you keep track of whether somebody bought something or not. Um, and this is sort of a simple thing I made up uh, for how to, what makes queries and clicks valuable. So a valuable query would be the one that's very popular, uh, the one that has a high CTR, click-through rate, and the one that yields some subsequent actions. Uh, if, they don't, if queries don't do that, they're not super valuable, or something about your search sucks, that people are not uh, continuing, you know, getting deep enough to get to the transactions. And similarly, uh, hits, they're valuable on, really only if they yield uh, transactions in the end. 
So what you want to maximize is this, the popularity of a query, which you can't really maybe control. That's what, what people search for. But then you can control how often they uh, uh, click through, uh, on how often they click on something on search results, and whether they take action or not in the end. So these are things you want to maximize. And these are a sort of failure modes when you have a query that's very popular, but people don't click on results, or they click on results, but they don't buy something. And I saw an example of uh, this uh, from Netflix data, where people used to search for, the, for Lost, that super popular series. Uh, they would search for that a lot. Uh, and I think the, 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 the data I saw was that they either didn't, well, they either didn't click on it a lot, uh, or they didn't actually uh, uh, do something about it when they got to the page that, that was for Lost. So that was a big, a big loss for them. People are searching for, uh, for the series, but for some reason they're not taking action. They're not uh, buying that. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, speed through this because uh, I have five more minutes. Queries that yield low click-through rates, bad. People are not clicking on results. Again, you, you, may, you want to track this over time for globally for the whole search and also for specific queries. Um, again, you want to focus on popular queries that have a low click-through rate. And you can, see that, um, you can see that here. So th these are queries that yield zeros. These are zeros. These are queries that were searched for but yielded zero hits, uh, yielded uh, zero clicks. People didn't click on them. So why? I would want to go look at these queries and, and figure out uh, what kind of search experience these people had that they didn't click on anything. Um, we'll skip that. It's not so super important. This is just the inverse of, of the previous thing. Um, Search sessions uh, are something that I mentioned uh, as something that you want to tie to, the, to any kind of a backend that keeps track of, uh, of uh, transactions. Uh, identifying sessions uh, is a little tricky because of the time dimension and, uh, and uh, what did I call it, um, specific information need. Uh, it's hard to tell when people switch information need and it's hard to tell whether somebody stopped or went out for lunch and came back or continued the same, uh, same search activity or not. So it's very fuzzy. Um, but uh, this is also uh, useful because everything that I talked about here is about reports, but search analytics can be more valuable than that, uh, meaning you can use this data to build things. Uh, uh, you can, you have, if you keep track of what people are searching for, you can build, and what, how they're correcting their queries, you can build a better spell checker. Uh, you can build uh, an auto-completion uh, mechanism if you know what they're searching for and which queries are yielding uh, good clicks and so on. Uh, and for that, uh, search sessions are important to, to identify. Um, so I'll skip that. Um, this is just ge general stuff about segmenting users, just like in web analytics. Do people here, uh, do you use search, do you use uh, Google Analytics, anyone? Okay. Huh. All right. Um, and these are various other reports that, uh, that you could have from search analytics that I didn't go through. Um, you know, hits that are trending up may, may show you which documents people are suddenly looking for, which you may want to uh, pull out of search and put them uh, somewhere in some visible place. Uh, I mentioned searchhadoop.com, uh, where we index all everything about Hadoop, including the mailing lists, and I always wonder actually, are there documents, especially those from the mailing list in that index, that people never click on? Uh, just, or they never even show up on search results? And I wonder, could, could we just remove those? Would, would the search relevance suffer? Uh, but this you know, is something that, uh, that uh, you can also uh, look at. Um, Number of queries per session, breakdown of queries by number of hits may tell you if, people are, if your search is not focused enough, not specific enough, uh, that people are always getting lots of hits. Um, latency, this is a little bit about performance, how fast the queries are. Are most queries in uh, zero to uh, you know, sub-second sub range or above uh, a second and so on. Uh, people using facets or not, or in which ones, which one should you keep, which, which one should you remove, which one should you put on top, this, this uh, will tell you. Um, you know, how, people, how deep people are going into the search results, are they uh, not happy with what they see on page one and therefore they're digging deeper in the results, or are they clicking on, on things on page two and three, 
Ideally, they shouldn't because everything that's relevant should be on the first page. Um, and quickly, uh, this is sort of the only diagram uh, that I have. Uh, very briefly, this is a, a, a web page, and these little red dots are JavaScript, JavaScript beacons that you can uh, use to capture events, what people are searching for. Uh, are they getting suggestions and clicking on suggestions in autocomplete? Are they using a did you mean uh, functionality? Uh, which hit did they, did they click on number two or number one? Did they click through to go to the next page? And all of this data can get collected, analyzed, and stored in database of some kind and presented in reports. And you can, if you look uh, here, we had a talk on, on sort of more technical stuff, what's, uh, how we built this, this thing essentially here in the presentation of, that's at this URL. Uh, I'm almost done. Uh, so this, these are some of the things that we've used uh, for our particular search analytics uh, ser service. Um, Hadoop uh, and HBase and Flume play a major role. Uh, out of the work that we've done there, we've open sourced uh, a, a couple of things. Uh, and um, we've also contributed some patches. If, you're on, if you listen to Doug Cudding, he when he showed the slide about Flume, one of the boxes there um, pointed to HBase, where we did some work to, to get the data from Flume into HBase. Um, we're hiring. And actually, worldwide, uh, somebody just asked me about, uh, uh, about Sematex. Do we have uh, seven people in six countries and three continents? Uh, so we, we really mean the worldwide part. And that's it. And actually, that URL there, down at the bottom doesn't work, <laughs> so so don't go there. Uh, but uh, if you if you want to if you want to know more or are interested in this, ask me about search analytics, and that's it. And sorry about. <laughs> sorry about uh, technical difficulties. Okay. Well, thanks for the talk. Um, are there any questions? I think we've okay. Right here. Yeah, just uh, uh, thanks for that. Um, I was wondering, we have, uh, uh, which I think a number of people have, uh, a lot of this depends on the size of the, of the corpus that you're searching. Uh, we have, you know, about a billion full text documents. So a lot of the, you know, head of the till stuff doesn't really work so well, you know. There's not a lot of popular queries because it's pretty spread out and things like that. Are there, there, there are not a lot of popular queries? No, because it's so, you know, it's such a huge corpus and such a wide ranging variety of queries that it's, it's you know, the... You'd probably, the but you'd probably have, so the, you'd probably have a, a, this distribution, right? Well, we, we see, you know, in, uh, uh, with a, you know, with a long tail, uh, we have like a tiny head and a super long tail. Mm -hmm. uh, so all the, thing that, all the things that really apply to the head are kind of less useful to us. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, kind of a hard question, but I was wondering if you have any sp specific, specific nuggets of wisdom for these like, you know, very long tail, almost no head kind of like situations. Well, in that case, so the, the question is what to do with a situation where the query distribution is such that there are not, not, not that many popular queries that you can focus on. Um, I would say that then you can't focus on individual queries. You have to focus on automated stuff that analyzes all of them together. So M MRR is uh, something that will keep track of, uh, sort of give you an, uh, an idea of the, of the quality of results based on where people are clicking on for basically everything. So you, you wouldn't focus on individual top N. Although, even if it's a small head, I mean, if it's 20 queries or 50 queries, it may be, uh, one thing I didn't show here, because uh, it's, it's, it's a new thing in, in, the, in the screenshots, is that I, I only showed the queries by count, but a valuable metric also is the percentage of queries. So you may have a query that, that was used 1,000 times, and that translates to obviously some percentage of total queries. So you may say, I'm going to focus only on top 5% of the queries. So even if that's small, that's how much time you've got. Yeah. OK, uh, short question, anyone? Oh, well, we are short. <laughs> OK, we are short. Um, do you compare the numbers to each other? Uh, when you say zero hit count is 5%, um, that's one thing for Google, but totally another thing for a book search, for example, for Amazon. Right. Uh, 
that would be up to whoever has the search analytics to determine what they, where they th so the question is what to do with zero queries and com look at it over time, right? Um, no, I, I mean uh, comparing these percentage of zero queries on different on different searches, but yeah, because you never have uh, effectively the same search engine yeah, in so two different scenarios. Di different different. Uh, Companies, different businesses, different search engines, or people behind different search engines may have di different thresholds about where they want that percentage to be of zero queries. Some people may say it's okay to have a high percentage of zero queries. I'm trying to think of an example. Or in some cases, actually, it's the opposite. Uh, you know, a patent, patent search, it's not a bad thing to have zero hit queries. That's a perfectly valid thing to have zero hit queries means the patent is not there. So it depends, completely depends. Okay, then thanks again to the speaker. Thank you.